हेलो एवरी वन सो वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग अवर फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ गैस्ट्रो इंटेस्टिनल ट्रैक्ट एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द पैंक्रियाज सो दिस वन इट इज द पैंक्रियाज आई थिंक अबाउट द एनाटोमिकल लोकेशंस यू विल लर्न इन द एनाटोमी पार्ट गोइंग थ्रू द फिजियोलॉजिकल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द दिस पैंक्रियाज सो देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ सेल्स और फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर आर टू पार्ट्स ऑफ द पैंक्रियाज फिजियोलॉजिकल पार्ट्स endocrinal part and exocrinal part endocrinal part of the pancreas which includes the isolates on the langerhans which releases different type of hormones for example insulin and glucagon directly into the blood vessels as you are looking in this and the exocrine portion of the pancreas these include the acinar and ductal cell these ductal cells secrete as aqueous solution which is rich in nhco3 and acinar cells secrete digestive enzymes there are different type of digestive enzymes we will see later on so there are two portions of the pancreas first one endocrinal portion of the pancreas which include the different type of hormones which is released from the pancreas directly into the blood these are the insulin and glucagon and second one exocrine part of the pancreas these include the ductal cells and acinar cells ductal cells secrete the sodium bicarbonate solution and acinar cells secrete digestive enzymes now pancreatic juice composition it is increase after the meal and decrease 3 hours after the meal so it's obvious it's a clear watery juice alkaline ph around 8.0 where the gastric ph is around 2 to 3 but here in the pancreatic juice the ph is around 8.0 500 ml per meal or 1500 ml per day it enters duodenum via the pancreatic duct adds in fat starch and protein digestion so that is the most important part pancreatic juice which helps in the fat starch and protein digestion next one it also contain different type of enzymes as well as the ions for example bicarbonate ion trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen pro carboxypeptidase these three are the inactive form of the proteolytic enzymes this is the amylase lipase nuclease collagenase elastase and trypsin inhibitor enzyme so this amylase is known as pancreatic amylase this lipase is known as pancreatic lipase this nucleus is also known as pancreatic nucleus as it is present or as, as it is secreted from the pancreas so these three are the important aspect of the pancreatic juice functions of the pancreatic juice so digestive function it is important for proteins carbohydrates and fat digestion as carbohydrate digestion protein digestion and lipid digestion it helps in carbohydrate protein and lipid digestion it having the neutralizing effect it produces sodium bicarbonate for neutralization of the chyme in the duodenum as the chyme means whatever the stomach content which is enter into the duodenum which also having the hcl along with it so inside the duodenum due to the release of pancreatic juice which contains high number of or high amount of sodium bicarbonate it neutralizes the acidic chyme into the duodenum so it will increase the ph around 8.0 whereas the ph in the stomach is around 1 to 2 because there is a secretion of hcl all right okay activation of pancreatic enzymes how the pancreatic enzymes are activated so here first of all trypsinogen it is inactive form of the pancreatic enzyme it is activated to the trypsin by the help of this enteropeptidase enzyme this enteropeptidase enzyme which is released from the mucosal cells of the duodenum so this converts trypsinogen into trypsin and trypsin also helps in another conversion of trypsinogen to the trypsin trypsin inhibitor enzyme which prevents conversion of trypsinogen into the trypsin into the pancreas so that is the most important thing which prevents auto digestion of the pancreas as uh, you already know that the many of the enzyme cell structure is mainly made up of the protein and this is the proteolytic enzyme so if 
the these trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen and procarboxypeptidase are active inside the pancreas then it will digest the pancreas so here along with the trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen and procarboxypeptidase there is a trypsin inhibitor enzyme which prevents conversion of trypsinogen into the trypsin into the pancreas and it's a important thing so here once the trypsin is activated it converts another molecules of trypsinogen into the trypsin chymotrypsinogen into chymotrypsin and procarboxypeptidase into carboxypeptidase all right so these three are the important proteolytic enzymes digestive functions of pancreatic enzymes first of all proteolytic with the help of this trypsin and chymotrypsin proteins are converted to polypeptides and with the help of this carboxypeptidase enzyme polypeptides are converted to free amino acids so these two are the important enzyme trypsin and chymotrypsin which breaks down protein into polypeptides and this carboxypeptidase enzyme releases free amino acids from the polypeptides other pancreatic enzymes for example pancreatic amylase which converts polysaccharides into maltose and monosaccharides pancreatic lipase which convert triglycerides to monoglycerides and fatty acids phospholipase hydrolyzes the phospholipids and cholesterol esterase hydrolyzes cholesterol esters so there are different type of pancreatic enzyme we already saw trypsin chymotrypsin and procarboxypeptidase these three are the proteolytic enzymes pancreatic amylase which convert polysaccharides to maltose and monosaccharides pancreatic lipase which convert triglycerides to monoglycerides and fatty acids so these three are the most important enzymes which works on the protein carbohydrate and fat part formation of bicarbonates how the bicarbonate or hco3 minus ion formation occurs in the ductal cells of the pancreas so the simple two molecules co2 plus h2o under the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme converted to the h2co3 h2co3 break down into hco3 minus and h plus as you are looking this is the hco3 minus and this one is the h plus so hco3 minus is go into the lumen of the pancreas so here that is the hco3 minus and this h plus ion having the replacement with the sodium ion so once the sodium ion enter into the ductal cell it will become enter into the lumen of the duct so that is how na plus plus hco3 minus that means sodium bicarbonate formation occurs inside the ductal cells as well as inside the lumen so whenever there is increase in the ph of the chyme it inactivate pepsin pepsin is also a proteolytic enzyme but it acts only at a low ph that means when the acidic environment is present inside the gi tract more enzyme activity and prevent ulcers so that is what the importance of sodium bicarbonate or the bicarbonates whenever the activity of this secretion of sodium bicarbonate is much lower then there will be the chances of duodenal ulcer is more so that is the important thing sodium bicarbonate phases of pancreatic secretions so first one cephalic phase and nervous phase the main role is of vagus and small role of the gastrin so cephalic phase and nervous phase it obvious that the conditioned and unconditioned reflex works over here so there will be the secretions which is rich in enzymes and poor in alkali or hco3 minus and it's a small in quantity so that is the cephalic phase and nervous phase second one chemical phase acids fats fatty acids amino acid increase pancreatic secretions through hormones cholecystokinin which is also known as pancreozymin and secretin so these two are the important pancreatic hormones regulation of pancreatic secretions mainly hormonal 
secretin which is released from the s cell of the duodenal or small intestinal mucosa acid chyme in the duodenum stimulates secretions rich in water and bicarbonate but poor in enzymes so whenever the acid chyme enter into the duodenum it stimulates the secretions which is rich in water and bicarbonate but poor in the enzymes so here the stimulus for the release of secretin hormone is the acid chyme second one cholecystokinin which is a hormone and it is released from the eye cells of the small intestinal mucosal cells these are the digestive products of the proteins and fats in the duodenum stimulate secretion of pancreatic juice rich in enzymes so here the stimulus for the release of cholecystokinin is the digestive products of proteins and fat most important thing you have to remember that the stimulus for the release of secretin hormone it is the acid chyme whereas the stimulus for the release of cholecystokinin hormone it is the digestive products of proteins and fat both hormones are secreted by upper intestinal cells so first of all about the secretin acid in the duodenal lumen whenever there is acid is present inside the duodenal lumen there will be the increased secretin release from the duodenal mucosa or the s cells of the duodenal mucosa as it is a hormone it is carried by the blood and it stimulate the pancreatic duct cells to release the bi sodium bicarbonate so there will be the increased secretion of aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution into the duodenal lumen so that is the important thing how the secretin is released and what it will do so acid in the duodenal lumen stimulates the s cells of the intestinal mucosa to release the secretin hormone into the blood via the blood it is act upon the pancreatic duct cells and it will cause increase in the secretion of aqueous sodium bicarbonate solution into the duodenal lumen so that is the importance of secretin hormone now second one cholecystokinin how the cholecystokinin stimulation occurs as well as what it will cause so fat and protein products in the duodenal lumen going to stimulate the i cells of the duodenal mucosa to release the cholecystokinin hormone as it is a hormone it is carried by the blood and it will having the stimulatory effect over the pancreatic acinar cells so there will be the increased secretion of pancreatic digestive enzymes into the duodenal lumen so that is what the effect of this uh, cholecystokinin hormone so stimulus for the release of cholecystokinin hormone it is the fat and protein products into the duodenal lumen so it will cause the stimulation of the i cells of the duodenal lumen so there will be the increase secretion of cholecystokinin or increase release of cholecystokinin hormone into the blood it is carried by the blood and it having the stimulation or stimulatory effect over the pancreatic acinar cells and it increase the secretion of pancreatic digestive enzymes into the duodenal lumen once this secretion of pancreatic digestive enzymes is uh, already present into the pancreatic juice and once the pancreatic juice is released into the small intestine this going to act on the fat and protein products into the duodenal as well as small intestinal lumen and it going to digest fat and protein products all right and here once the sodium bicarbonate is released inside the pancreatic juice and once the pancreatic juice is released into the duodenum or the small intestine it is going to neutralize the acid in the duodenal lumen all right so both the hormones having the different stimulation effect as well as the different response the most important and the git hormones will be asked as a short note and you have to mention gastrin hormone which is released from the g cells of the stomach secretin hormone which is released from the s cells of the small intestine 
and the cholecystokinin hormone which is secreted from the eye cells of the small intestine all right so these three important hormone you must have to mention in the short note of git hormones so now the applied aspect acute pancreatitis obstruction in the duct so there will be the accumulation of trypsinogen and there will be the activation of trypsinogen to trypsin inside the pancreas so there will be strong proteolytic effect and auto digestion of pancreas and it may be a serious or lethal condition so that is the acute pancreatitis it is due to blockage in the duct or the pancreatic duct so there will be the accumulation of the trypsinogen and uh, once the trypsinogen is activated to trypsin you know that it's a proteolytic enzyme having the strong proteolytic effect and it will cause auto digestion of pancreas and it is a serious condition so that is the applied aspect of the pancreas acute pancreatitis and there will be also the chronic pancreatitis but it's a topic of medicine department so you will learn in the future about this pancreatitis in detail